monopoly on things such as the national championship titles. But in fact, the last G5 team to win a national title was BYU in 1984. And now BYU is actually considered a Power 5 program. Now, the five Power 5 conferences are the SEC, as I talked before, the Big 10, the Big 12, the Pac-12, and the ACC. All of those schools have anywhere between 12 to 20 teams in each conference. Um, they get more money, they get more revenue, they get more eyes, they have more fans, they're bigger schools in general, etc. The G5 conferences are the other five conferences, and these conferences consist of teams that are considered to be smaller, not as good in college football, generally speaking. Now, um, and those, uh, the names of those conferences are the Mountain West, the AAC, the Sun Belt, the Conference USA, and the MAC. These conferences usually don't get as much money because they don't have as much viewership, which means they um, don't get paid as much. Not, a, not as much people are watching them, so not as much of a demand for them. Supply and demand in college football as in every other thing in America. Now, that brings us to TV revenue and distribution, as I talked just barely about why there's a distinction between the Power 5 conferences and the G5 conferences. The Power 5 conferences have the teams that there are many fans of. They get viewership every week, which equals what? More money. ESPN, ABC, and NBC, and Fox are the four biggest um, distrib distributors uh, of college football every fall. Now, the P5 conferences on average each earn $500 million per year on average. That means each team in those conferences gets about $50 million and they can use that to whatever resource they want to in their athletics. The G5 conferences, on the other hand, because they don't have as much viewership, only get paid about $110 million per year or $11 million per team in the conference because not as many fans equals, not, equals less TV time, which equals less money. Now, that's the biggest reason uh, there are the distinctions, and that is a big reason on why conference realignment is a thing. And conference realignment is when one team moves from one conference to another. Right here is a graph of what I was just talking about. The Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, Pac-12, and ACC. All five of the Power Five conferences. This shows how much money they are uh, expected to make in the next eight years. Of course, for 2022-2023, the Big Ten, SEC, made about $58 million and $56 million per school. They are projected to make close to $100 million per school in 2028 and 2029. The other three conferences do not make as much money, as you can see, because they don't have as many big teams. Um, they only are projected to make $44 million about per school in 2023 and up to $50 million in 2029. To put it into perspective, the G5 conferences were only pr projected to make ha half of this, of the smallest portion of the P5 conferences, about $11 million per school. The least amount of money a P5 conference team will get, $39 million. The most amount of money a G5 team gets, $12 million a year. So that shows the big distinction on why a program would want to be in one of these said conferences. Well, this is where it all begins. Conference realignment has been a thing for decades in, in football, basketball, baseball, soccer, etc. But the biggest conference realignment has happened in just the past few years. And it all started in July of 2021 when the SEC came to Texas and Oklahoma, who was part of another P5 conference, the Big 12. And they said, Instead of you making $40 million a year in the Big 12, come to the SEC and these TV distributors, Fox and ESPN, 
will pay you $100 million a year. So a $60 million plus. Well, of course, Texas and Oklahoma took that offer. And it created a big swirl in the college football world. Texas and Oklahoma have been part of the Big 12 for over 100 years. Tradition was taken away. Now, the aftermath of that, the Big 12 had to stay afloat. They had to get more teams in there that were profitable, that would keep the conference alive and it wouldn't dissolve. So what did they do? They went out and got BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF. And they just joined this year in 2023. That's not where it stopped, though. In June of 2022, the Big 10, another P5, went to the Pac-12, another P5. And they offered USC and UCLA a very similar deal. Instead of getting $38 million a year in the Pac-12, USC and UCLA was offered $100 million a year plus to join the Big Ten. And of course they took that. Now, after that, Oregon and Washington soon followed in suit. They said, we wanted to join that conference and the Big Ten took them as well. Now, this is where the Pac-12 sadly did not make it. They did not have any other options. They could not take any other teams that would give them enough profit for the TV distributors like ABC, NBC, ESPN, and Fox to pay them enough for the schools to want to stay. So what did the other schools do that were still left in the Pac-12? Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and Arizona State joined the Big 12. They were projected to make only $20 million after the departure of those schools. Um, the next following years. But in the Big 12, they're going to be making at least $50 million a year. So, they survived. There are only two other teams left, Washington State and Oregon State. And they're still trying to figure out what to do. The good of this happening. Well, it's really good for the teams that are able to join these P5 conferences, especially the SEC and the Big 10. You go from making anywhere from 20 to $50 million a year to at least 80 to $100 million a year. Even for teams such as BYU and Utah, they will be both be making more per year for, for their athletics than any time in their program's history. Rivalries will be renewed as well. Just as I talked about, the BYU versus Utah rivalry has not been the same. They have not been in the same conference for over a decade. Now, next year, they will be, and that means more viewership, more eyes when they play, and more money for the TV distributors and for the teams. College football getting more views in general. If you have really good teams playing really good teams every week, there's going to be a lot of views. And of course, what does that equal? More money. And that's all this comes down to. There are more competitive conferences, of course. If you have Texas, Oklahoma, and Alabama in one conference, that conference will always be more competitive. The Big 12 will be competitive for BYU, Utah, TCU, etc. The bad. Of course, there are not great things about this as well. The G5 schools, as they always say, the richer get richer and the poorer get poorer. There's a huge separation between the G5 and P5 now bigger than ever before. As I said back on this graph, this shows how much money each conference is projected to make. Big 10 SEC, $100 million plus. The Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, except, except you scratch out the Pac-12, they're not gonna exist anymore. Expected to make 50 million. Let's just take the $50 million route, the low end. Like I said before, even if you compare the low end of the P5 conferences to the high end of the G5, the difference is insurmountable. At least $30 million difference each year for each program. P5 has a monopoly on best schools and titles, of course. The best schools are going to compete, 